If you look at valuations, if you look at concerns in the world, be it coronavirus, the possible downturn of the world economy, equities see no end. Is it problematic that valuations could be frothy for a company like Blackstone? Well, I think you have to step back and look at the global picture. And what you're seeing is some challenges on the manufacturing side and an overall global slowdown that's obviously going to be exacerbated by the virus. And, and so that's sort of the glass half empty side. On the glass half full side, consumers around the globe are in pretty good shape. Unemployment here in the UK, I think, is at a 30 year low. In the US, unemployment's three and a half percent. Um, you know, we resolved some of the big risks out there in terms of the U.S. MCA trade agreement. The China-U.S. trade tensions have gone down. And we have very accommodative central bank policy. And so in an environment, when you sort of put that together, in an environment where growth is likely to continue sort of slow but steady, and you have very low rates, I don't think it's um, irrational that markets continue to hang in there. Obviously, facts on the ground can change. If the virus situation got worse and spread, you could see markets trade off. But I think overall, it's reflective of a low growth, accommodative policy, and that's supportive for valuations. So what's your biggest concern when, when making deals? That you have too much things that you're looking at? That you have too little? That you're overpaying? Or that you know there are disruptors along the way? Yeah. I, I would say for us, the, the big risk, of course, is you are in this slow growth environment where valuations are high. And so the question is, how do you generate outside returns? Um, we have some good advantages in the sense that our platform is very broad. We can do things in infrastructure, life sciences. We just announced a deal in the bladder cancer space in partnership with a Swiss company. We've got a direct lending business, Real Estate Corp Plus. So we can do a lot of different things. We operate at a scale that's pretty unique. Uh, we've done things like Refinitiv, 20 plus billion dollar deals where there's not a lot of competition. We bought Hilton Worldwide back in 2007. Our most successful deal because we were able to intervene and really improve the company which is something that's powerful in our model and then to the point of how do you find specific opportunities in this environment what we look for are some big themes and a lot of that relates to disruption which is as the economy changes even if it's not growing slowly there are winners and losers so online commerce is growing rapidly we've made a huge push into last mile logistics there's a content revolution that's happening we've done a lot in that area there's a migration to the cloud that's happening in terms of software and we bought a number of businesses that way so I think in an environment like this you've got to identify some themes you believe in and really go all in and that's been helpful for us across our business so John do you think you'll go all in this year so you were talking about this mega exit refinitiv you know do, do, are you looking for the for the next big investment thing so we're always looking for big opportunities. And to be clear on Refinitiv, we did announce the merger with the London Stock Exchange. It's not an exit. It will be a major shareholder for a number of years. Um, we're always on the lookout for bigger opportunities um, to try to find great businesses, great companies, real estate, where we see something, where we see an opportunity to improve that business, improve operations. Um, so that is part of our business. And what we like is there's just less competition for larger size opportunities. So short answer, yes, we'll be looking for bigger things to do. Okay, give me one sector where, where you're looking. Is it a sector well, or is it a country? You, well, well, you know, I could do a little bit of both. What I would say, I touched on some earlier sectors, so I'll talk geographically for a moment. I think right here in the UK, there's a lot of opportunity. You know, this is an economy that has, um, you know, really great capital markets, rule of law, tremendous talent here. Um, Brexit has obviously added an element of uncertainty and has slowed growth. But the UK stock market in dollar terms has underperformed by 50% relative to the US market. And that seems to us to be too much of a discount. So we've bought a number of things here, a big exhibition center business. We bought the arches underneath the rail system in the UK. Uh, we announced the merger, the Refinitiv merger. We bought Merlin, which is a big theme park operator here, including the London Eye. So we like the UK and expect to do more here. 
In the emerging markets, I think India is an interesting place. It's a little bit of financial turmoil it's facing today, but long term, it's similar population to China, but a fraction of the GDP, real strength in IT services, lots of folks who speak English, um, leadership there that is more pro-growth oriented than historically. And so we've been big investors in both private equity and in real estate. So we're looking for those kind of opportunities. I throw out a couple of other sectors um, that are interesting. I tell you that the leverage loan market, which gets a lot of negative press, which are senior non-investment grade loans, often to private equity deals, that to us is an interesting area. Um, and I would tell you that the secondaries market, which is as alternatives grow as a sector, there's opportunity there because big institutions, when they want to sell their positions in private equity or private credit funds or private real estate, don't have a lot of places to grow. We have a big business in that area. So even in a challenging environment, there are opportunities you can find. Yeah, that's pretty clear. John, going back to Brexit, you were bullish actually on, on Brexit and the UK from the very beginning. Are you, you know, you've bought a number of companies. Are you even more bullish now or do you want to wait for that UK-EU relationship? We have 11 months of negotiation. Does that actually make a difference to whether you go all in in the UK or not? Yeah. I think waiting uh, for an all clear sign generally is tough because then prices tend to react. So I, I think the election was helpful for clarity. If you think about investment and companies, certainty gives them the confidence to invest, the confidence to grow their businesses. And so this election, I think, has helped in that regard. Regardless of where you stood on the Brexit issue, I think it does provide a level of clarity that will help the economy. How the ultimate settlement will work out between the EU and UK, I'm sure that will be messy along the way. But I think longer term, there's now a path. I think that can give investors some confidence. So for us, we'll continue to look for things. And, and yes, we're bullish on the UK. Um, John, very quickly, what do you think there's so much capital in private equity at the moment? Is that a good or a bad thing? Is it just capital waiting to yeah. be deployed overall? Well, I think you have to put, if, if you just talk about private equity narrowly, um, to put some numbers around it, it's a $2 trillion business against global stock markets, which are $100 trillion. So it has grown a lot, um, but it's still very small relative to the overall market cap out there. I also think what's happened is people have responded to strong performance. So if you look at our business, we've delivered 15% net returns now for almost 30 years. And so investors have looked at that and said, hey, I would like more access to that. And then when you look at the overall amount of capital, the amount of mega funds, they're roughly the same as prior to the crisis. So again, I think um, there's a lot of talk that there are bubbles building up here. We don't think that's the case. We think the private equity model is powerful, and particularly at the largest size of the market, we think there's a favorable competitive dynamic.